Hello there. You know, I've mostly been a Democrat throughout my entire life, if you can't figure that out from previous videos that I've done here. And uh, these days, the parties have all become twisted and, and warped from their original versions. And they always do. I mean, the Republican Party is the newer party. It's, it came about as an anti-slave party. And then the Democratic Party existed as the Southern uh, you know, Oppression Party for the Blacks. And then somewhere around 1948, they switched places. And now you know, anybody who's the racist will vote Republican. And the Democratic Party has gone largely to uh, become a, well, it's hard to tell anymore. And, and I... Um, hear people who say things like, there's hardly a bit of difference between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. And I used to think that was nonsense, but, you know, sometimes you hear things and you think about them a little bit more, and, and they don't seem as much nonsense as they used to. Because I do see that the same people who are financing the Republican Party are also financing the Democratic Party. You know, and the, this is where we're at in, in this country today. Uh, we have a big, expensive uh, way to get elected that you have to put television commercials out and radio commercials in there. It costs a lot of money to get elected into a federal office. And there are certain corporations who give money to both sides, both the Democratic and the Republican side. And it probably shouldn't be that much of a surprise to people that the Republicans are way in control of everything now. And they have been for a while. And uh, part of what's going on, of course, is that the same corporations that finance the Republican Party are also financing the Democratic Party. And the Democratic Party is just the, the Me Too Party. Uh, you know, they don't really do anything of substance that really affects the betterment anymore of the society. And that didn't used to be the case. You know, throughout the, for 40 years, prior to about 1990-something, at least before 1980, from 1934 till 1980, the Democratic Party was totally in control, and they supported the unions, and they started Medicare and Social Security, and they increased the education budgets and all that kind of stuff. And the United States became the most prosperous country on the face of the earth. But since that time, the, have, the Democratic Party lost its way, and eventually the Republican Party became the majority party. And I think one of the key things that in this transition, the transition was already occurring, but a big wave of the transition had to do with like 1994-95 when Newt Gingrich and the other Republicans brought in this contract with America. And the, he proposed a series of actions with another, with I believe 300 other Republicans that stood with him, and they signed a pledge that they would pass a series of actions, and they would make sure it really happened if they got elected as the majority party, and they they won. They got the majority, and, and Bill Clinton was the president at the time, and, and he kind of folded and went along with them in a lot of these things. And some of those things that they did were like welfare reform, and uh, there was new legal, uh, a new legal system that they put in accordingly. And they, they said some of the three of the big ones is they said they were going to pass a balanced budget amendment. And they were going to put in term limits for all the congressmen and the senators. And they were going to um, also, what was the other one they were going to do? But uh, they were going to do all these things. And really, basically, what they did was they cut taxes and they deregulated, which is the same thing they did during the Reagan administration when they had a little bit of control 
during the Reagan administration. And so, what, oh yeah, that's right, they were going to do a line item veto as well. And most of the things that they promised, those were the big things, they, they, they didn't follow through with. But nobody noticed after a couple of years, and there were complications anyway. So, they're still in control. After all those years, they're still in control. The, United, the, the Democrats took control for like two years almost, about 1997 and 98, wasn't it? No, 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 2008, 2009, I believe it was. But um, now the Republicans are back in, in control. And when you look at the difference between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, there really, really isn't that much difference anymore. There, there is a oligarchy that exists in the United States, whereas the very wealthy and powerful individuals contribute money to people to get reelected. And this is how the congressmen spend a good deal of their time. They, they go to places where these rich people are and they, they beg for money. And, you know, they'll, they'll say that there's not a bribery involved in this. But I don't believe that. I mean, who would give you a million dollars to get elected to Congress if you weren't going to get something back? I mean, no people don't give money away for free. So I have a proposal. There's a couple of proposals that I want to point out. If the Democratic Party wants to get back into power, they should do a similar thing as Newt Gingrich did back in 1994-95. And that is a contract with America. Make some promises and try to follow through on them. And I know Hillary Clinton is talking about one already, which is she wants to get rid of the Electoral College, which to me isn't that much of a big deal. I mean, the, the, the unintended consequence of getting rid of the Electoral College could be that we would end up with more of a parliamentary system of government. It's no one person has to have over 50% of the Electoral College vote, then you won't require that their one party exists that would get over 50% of the votes. And you would have minor parties and you would have to put together coalitions. And a lot of the, possibly a lot of the uh, elections then would go into the House of Representatives because there wouldn't be a clear-cut majority because the Electoral College evens all that out, you know. And, uh, well, the, all right, get rid of the Electoral Colleges. That, that's one thing they could put on their promise. But here's the biggie. And this is something that I think if the Democrats ever want to be a real power anymore in the country, they should propose an amendment that states that no private individual or corporation or organization will be allowed to contribute any money toward an electoral candidate in, in running for office. And that is in order to remove money from politics. And, and you know, you say, well, you can't do that. What about the First Amendment? For, and, and the Supreme Court said that uh, that money is speech and and they also said that it, that they can give any anybody can give an unlimited amount of money the Citizen United uh, decision that they made. Well, yeah, but you got to pass an amendment to the Constitution to change that. That's what you have to do. You know, you say in the amendment that nobody, no individual or corporation or organization of any sort shall be allowed to contribute money to any elected official or person running for public office. And what also would be required is that the media, whether it be television or radio or newspapers, has to give equal time to all candidates that qualify for any public office running, any election. So that that might cause, if you do that and get rid of the Electoral College, what you would see is many more parties coming up. Because anybody who got enough signatures to go on the ballot would then have to be given equal time on the media according to this constitutional amendment. It would be a requirement to be in the media that you would have to give equal time to all candidates running for public office. 
this, I know this is a very radical idea because everybody that runs for public, there might be if you, possibly some parties that you really think are terrible that might qualify and get equal time. But in a way, this is freedom of speech, more than what we have right now. Because what we have right now is the only people who get to speak are the ones who can afford to speak in the media. I mean, unless you put out a little video like this, which is free. Other than that, if you want to go on television or the radio, you got to pay. You got to pay through the nose. And the only ones that can have free speech in America are people who have money behind them. See, all you need is enough signatures to get on the ballot if you pass this amendment, and they have to give your opinion air. And if your opinion is crazy, doesn't make any sense, doesn't hold water, well, democracy, the, the idea behind democracy is that you would say, yes, uh, that doesn't make any sense, and you would lose the election. Because uh, according to the idea of democracy, the, the people are wise, supposedly, and they make wise decisions. Now, I don't know if that's true. I mean, you know, maybe they see... One of the reasons that they put the Electoral College in place is because some of our founding fathers didn't believe that. They believed that the people are like a mob sometimes, and they can be led into strange directions, Donald Trump. And um, that's what they put the Electoral College in, partially. It was to protect smaller states from the bigger states also, they said. But it's also because they didn't trust absolutely the will of the common man. They wanted a special group of people to make the final decision. However, we are in this situation in America now where the wealthy people have figured out that they can buy advertising on television and the radio and everything and buy stations. They actually own Clear Channel or, or Fox or wherever they actually own the, all these networks, and they can then filter the news according to their opinions and according to their best interests anymore. They figured that out around uh, somewhere in the 70s, actually. They didn't allow free speech to actually occur anymore. People, you know, they're manipulated, and they don't want to admit it. I, I, I don't want to sound like I sound, I'm, I'm, I'm coming off like I'm superior, but... There are a lot of dummies in the world who, who listen to people who say the same thing over and over and over to them. So if I were the Democratic Party, if you want to ever be a real party anymore, and you want to represent the average man and the common man and the working man, as, as you claim that's your principles, then you should pass these amendments to the Constitution. You should propose it and, and do it. I, 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 you know, the president can't veto an amendment to the Constitution. So I, I thank you for your time.